Did you have a question over here? Yeah. So after water puts that one six bond, yep. does that whole molecule? That whole molecule is glucose, and it's ready for glycolysis. Oh. So, but what about that? Just so now this, this whole thing that's left behind, now notice there's no branches in here. What is going to attack it? Glycogen phosphorylase. So glycogen phosphorylase now says, oh, I like this, and it starts chewing in from the end. Until the last one that gets cleaved off? Yep. That, yeah, what happens to that? That's what I'm saying. This one, is, this one that's clipped off is glucose. Oh, that one right there. Yeah. So glucose is released. That's what this guy is, is glucose, because it's a polymer of glucose. So when you clip it off, you're left with glucose, which now enters glycolysis. Make sense? Yeah. Yes, Lynette. The water doesn't have any energy to provide, okay? So the water is simply used to break that bond. We saw water breaking peptide bonds. We didn't see energy in, uh, an energy component of that either. This is just water providing the necessary reagents necessary to break that bond. Okay. Yeah. Can you call a glucose one phosphate? Can you abbreviate that G1P? Yes, you can abbreviate glucose one phosphate as G1P if you wish. Yes. All right, so that's the breakdown of glycogen. The synthesis of glycogen is almost as simple. There's one other enzyme, or one additional enzyme. There's three in the breakdown, there's four in the synthesis. All right. If we try to reverse the reactions of the glycogen breakdown and make glycogen, we wouldn't get very far because we have to make high energy bonds. Those alpha-1-4 bonds have high energy. The alpha-1-6 bonds, even though they don't have high energy, they have some energy. So in order to make those bonds, we have to use molecules that themselves have higher energy. Just like we had to use ATP and GTP to make glucose, so too do we have to use triphosphates to make glycogen. The triphosphate that we use to make glycogen is UTP. UTP, okay? Now, I'll show you the reaction in a second, but the reaction involving UTP makes this molecule. Here's the UDP part of it right here. They start out as a UTP, and it's linked to glucose. This guy right here has a lot of energy. It's something we call an activated intermediate. I'll define that for you in a second. But this is an activated intermediate. An activated intermediate is a molecule that has a lot of energy, and it uses some of that energy to donate a part of itself to something else. I'll repeat that. An activated intermediate. It's a molecule that has high energy, and it uses a part of that energy to donate a part of itself to something else. Now, we'll see how that occurs in a minute, but that's the definition of what an activated intermediate is. We'll see activated intermediates uh, occur also in the citric acid cycle. Now, let's see how this guy is made. Okay, this guy is made. Oh, it's not on here. All right, I'll describe the reaction. All right, so the reaction that makes this molecule is catalyzed by an enzyme that has a mouthful of a name, and I decided I won't make you know it. Okay, I'll tell you what it is if you want to if you want to know. It's called UDP pyro UDP glucose pyrophosphorylase. Be an extra credit question on the exam for that, right? Okay, no, there won't. No. Okay. UDP glucose. All of a sudden, we go, what's the name of that? <laughs> UDP glucose pyrophosphorylase. It catalyzed the following reaction. The reaction is UTP okay, plus glucose 1 phosphate. There's our friend glucose 1 phosphate again. Yields this guy plus two phosphates. This guy has a lot of energy. And the energy comes from the UTP originally. Now, what's going to happen is this guy is going to be used to add this glucose to a growing glycogen chain. 
So this guy is going to donate the glucose and during the synthesis of glycogen. Let's take a look at that. The synthesis of glycogen is catalyzed by an enzyme known as, very simple name, glycogen synthase. S-Y-N-T-H-A-S-E. Glycogen synthase starts with glycogen. It starts with UDP glucose. The reaction takes this glucose off. It puts it on to uh, glycogen in an alpha-1,4 linkage. So it's, this guy is making alpha-1,4 bonds. And the glycogen chain just grew by one glucose residue. It leaves behind UDP and a, a glycogen chain that's one longer. Yes, sir? Um, so UDPG uh, is the one that donates the glucose to glycogen, and it does that by like, glycogen synthase? Glycogen synthase catalyzes the transfer of glucose from UDPG, that's UDP glucose, to glycogen. Now we see that that energy that was in the UDP glucose is used to make that alpha-1,4 bond. That was the question that you asked. Okay, So it takes energy to make that high energy bond, the alpha-1,4 bond between the different glucoses. The result of this is glycogen is one residue longer. That is glycogen synthesis. Well, there's one other enzyme. What am I missing? I need 1,6 bonds, right? Haven't talked about how I make the 1,6 bonds. How do I get branches in there? Well, it's a very complicated reaction. It involves an enzyme called branching enzyme. And there are textbooks out there that get all excited and wet their pants about the format of the glycogen that it uses. And I don't really think that's very important. What matters is it makes 1,6 bonds. It grabs some of the guys at the end and it moves it over and makes a 1,6 bond. Would you predict that would require energy or not require energy? No energy, I see back there Stuart shaking his head. Why? The alpha-1,4 bond has more energy than the 1,6. So it's very trivial for the cell to use the energy of the 1,4 to make a 1,6. It does not require energy for branching enzyme to do its thing. And branching enzyme is doing this right here. It doesn't really matter how many from the end it is and how many it moves and blah, blah, blah. What matters is it's making branches. Okay, You've just seen a branch. Here's something here. Just said I'm making another branch over here. And it's often doing its thing. Make sense? OK. That is the extent of it. Now, that's how we make glycogen. As I said, the synthesis and breakdown of glycogen are very trivial. They're very simple. The regulation is more complicated. And I'm going to spend uh, some time talking about the regulation, because I think it's important to know that regulation. Yes, ma'am. No, everything on this on this page is is on this exam. Yeah, sorry. Yep. Yes. Can I summarize what I just said? The breakdown in synthesis. Uh huh. Yep. I'm not sure. I'm, uh, you talk, you, you mean you talk about the synthesis then of glycogen? Is that what you mean to summarize? Okay. So in synthesizing glycogen, all right, it's very straightforward. We have a an enzyme called glycogen synthase. Glycogen synthase uses UDP glucose as a way of adding glucose to the growing glycogen chain. It's a very straightforward reaction. It catalyzes the addition of glucose in an alpha one four linkage, so the glycogen grows by one. How do we get UDP glucose? We got it by action of that enzyme that had the mouthful of a name that put UTP together with glucose 1-phosphate to make UDP glucose. So that reaction is necessary to get this overall process going. The last reaction in the making of glucose, not my glucose, in the making of glycogen is the one catalyzed by branching enzyme. Branching enzyme takes 
and breaks alpha-1-4 bonds, moves a chunk over and converts it to a 1-6 bond. And that's all that's involved in the synthesis of glycogen. Does that help? OK. Let's talk about the regulation. The regulation has this figure that you've seen once before that looks like this. Now, before I talk about that, I want you to know I'm not just giving you something to memorize that I think is just trivial. This is pretty important. And the reason it's important is cells have enzymes that are capable of doing some incredible things. And if you think about it, the cell wants to break down glycogen very rapidly. Because when it needs that glucose, it doesn't want to have to wait around for it. The problem with that is that if it breaks it down very rapidly, it also needs to turn off that breakdown very rapidly. Because if it doesn't, it's going to break down all of its glycogen and waste energy. Okay. Similarly, cells want to be able to make glycogen quickly so it's ready in an instant if necessary. So the controls that we see in, in, in uh, um, glycogen breakdown and synthesis are very elaborate so as to give the cell those, that very strong power it needs to make and break down glycogen as quickly as it can. All right. What we're seeing here is the enzyme involved in glycogen breakdown. The enzyme exists in two forms. It exists in a T form, and it also exists in an R form. The T form stood for what when we talked about hemoglobin? Tight. Was hemoglobin binding oxygen or not binding oxygen then? Not binding it. In an enzyme, the T form is not very active. The R form is very active. OK? So if we focus on this guy, we say, OK, there's an inactive force. It's inactive. By the way, when we talk about on and off with enzymes, we usually talk about more like the volume going down and up instead of on and off. All right? This guy is turned way down. This guy is turned way up. Well, this is glycogen phosphorylase. Glycogen phosphorylase, if I want to turn it on, oh, by the way, glycogen phosphorylase exists in two forms, which means it exists in four forms. Because each form can exist in an R and a T. That's what this figure is trying to show you. Glycogen phosphorylase B is the form that people refer to as the less active form of glycogen. You'll see why in a minute. Of glycogen phosphorylase. You'll see why in a minute. Glycogen phosphorylase A is described as the more active form of glycogen phosphorylase. What's the difference between B and A? Right there, phosphates. I convert B into A by putting phosphates on it. I convert A into B by taking phosphates off of it. Yes, that requires ATP. We're not going to worry about all the enzymes involved at the moment. All right? But the main enzyme we're talking about is glycogen phosphorylase. Many textbooks, including your textbook, refer to it as phosphorylase. When they talk about phosphorylase, they're talking about glycogen phosphorylase, that same enzyme that we said broke down glycogen. OK. Phosphorylase B, phosphorylase A. The only difference being that this has phosphates, this has no phosphates. Yes, sir? Uh, can only be converted between the two forms in the T state? No. It can be converted in the R state as well, and that's another reason this figure is not very good. So this, the, the, the R form can also be interconverted back and forth here. OK? Now, well, what differs between the T state and the R state? It depends on which form of the enzyme we're talking about. If we're talking about the form of the enzyme with no phosphates, the regulation is interesting. Okay? What, turns, what converts it into the R state? AMP. What does AMP indicate in the cell? Low energy, right? What does the cell want to do when it's got low energy? It wants to make more energy, and it's going to break down glycogen so it's got glucose so it can make energy, right? Bingo. 